Welcome to the Sisyphus Crane and Rigging Channel. Have you ever heard of the Possilier Lipkin linkage? Thankfully, that's the only time I'll massacre the French. From now on, it's Pusilier. This is Mr. Vix, and it's the story of making a Pusilier linkage to do some kind of actual kinetic performance. If you search the internet for this um, elegant sort of linear motion device, you'll see a lot of computer models and some physical ones that they all have a common fundamental flaw in my opinion. There's something missing. But first, what is a Pusilier Lipkin linkage? This is a thing that was invented in 1864 and it was known as the first true planar straight line mechanism. It's mathematical, like any linkage is actually. All the math is on the Wikipedia page, link below. Lord Kelvin, mathematician, mathematical physicist, engineer, and the professor of natural philosophy at the University of Glasgow for 53 years, he was given a model of the Pusilier linkage by Sylvester, another mathematician, and he didn't want to give it up. He said, no, I'm fascinated with this thing. It's it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. The actual quote is, no, I have not had nearly enough of it. It is the most beautiful thing I have ever seen in my life. Now that's, obviously he was taken with it. It was a challenge for me. How am I going to incorporate this into some kind of kinetic art? I've used, uh, in other kinetic art I've done, I've used straight line ramps before, just in time ramps. and. So like the ball is about to fall off and suddenly a ramp comes into position and it makes it, you know, it saves it from falling off. Um, and I thought maybe this could be another take on that idea. By the way, you know how I found the Pusilier mechanism? I was working on this, the MISO-1, in 2014. It's a specialized milling machine to mill off and collect material from the areas of interest of a FFPE microscope slide, formalin fixed paraffin embedded slide on which you use a microtome to slice tissue and place it on the slide and fix it to the slide with paraffin. The um, milling aspect for this device was special because it needs to work in a way that no other mill works. The milling tip has to hit the surface of the slide lightly and knock off the AOI, the area of interest, while sucking it up so it can be analyzed. And it's not an easy trick. The head needs to come down in linear but precise motion, no left and right, back and forth. It's got to be only up and down and then rest lightly on the surface of the slide without breaking it. Slides are rather fragile, they're one millimeter thick, and it's got to be spring loaded and adjustable so that the uh, surface pressure is not too much and not too little, just enough to mill off that material that's on the slide. The machine to do it was tricky, but the tip, an end mill if you will, but a very special one, was really a brilliant invention. Invented by Nils Zadie, PhD, this tip could both squirt out a buffer solution while simultaneously sucking up the material that it dislodged and do this in a disposable to avoid contamination. No tubes or plumbing or anything. They require extensive cleaning because cross-contamination is a big issue with these. But it then could be removed and squirt the sample th that it collected into a test tube for ongoing analysis, such as a biopsy. One possible way to do this is to use a parallel linkage and uh, the Pusilier linkage was something we examined. It could have worked. Also the something called the Saras mechanism. Stay tuned for that. We ended up with that linear ball slide bearing, which works, but it has some issues. Nevertheless, the system was refined. It wound up looking like this, then finally like this one, a product on the market. About the principle, you can study the math for it, but the mathematics boil down to having a constraining link that moves in an arc. And that keeps the diamond, formed by the four equal links, at an equivalency, sort of, 
corresponding to the rotation of the whole structure such that the shaping of the diamond forces the top links to remain straight through the travel distance. So to the problem with all the Pusillier models you find out there on the internet, have you guessed what it is? They all show a mechanism that's constrained in the lateral plane. I mean, if you have the links modeled with flat pieces of, say, cardstock or paper, it works fine if you lay it on a table, but if you try to pick it up, it's very floppy. And in a CAD model, uh, it's very rigid. You could model it out of paper and it wouldn't flop because that's the way the computer works. Some of the models, the computer models that you can see on the internet, have what look to be stable links, and that's what I ended up making. But until you build one, you don't really know what it needs. So looking at the axes, it moves forward and back on the axis of movement. The vertical axis is fixed because that's the whole point of this thing to avoid going anywhere in the vertical axis. But the lateral axis, that's the one that needs to be built in such a way that it's, it holds up. And so that's what I try to do with my links, as you can see. To make a ramp move back and forth with, you know, using any kind of a linear bearing, which is cheating in my opinion, you know, some of these things that you see on the internet, they've got a working pusillier mechanism, but in the end, there's a linear bearing there. So you might as well just remove the whole pusillier. The linear bearing does its job on its own. To make it work, you need two of them together. And that's why I put two of them together. Besides, there's a nice rhythm to the two of them dancing back and forth. If the casual viewer looks at it in the finished Kineticon that I'm building, they might think that it would have been easier to use a linear bearing. Of course, it would have been easier to use a linear bearing, but it's false logic. A pusillier Lipkin linkage isn't needed to get linear motion. They don't need wide joints because you, you could just use a linear bearing. Two of them is doubly redundant to put two of them in there to be redundant. And ultimately, why would you build a rolling ball sculpture with a break in the ramp anyway? That's my kind of logic. And that's going to wrap it up for Pusillier Part 1. Part 2 coming up shortly. I want to tell you more about the Opto flag, the electrical connections, and the Arduino programming as well as the machining. So goodbye and thanks for watching.